Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. This is episode forever uh, and really glad that you're here. We've been doing this for over three years, coming up on four. And uh, the purpose of these calls is simply to encourage and promote the idea of moving your business and your creativity forward just a little bit. And I have the privilege of inviting some friends uh, both within and outside the photo industry and some who are both within and outside the photo industry uh, into some conversations that I hope will spark dialogue. The point isn't for everyone to agree. The point is for us to continue constructively to push forward and reinvent our industry in constructive ways. So today is no exception and I'm super excited to introduce my new friend, Jen Hillinga. Jen, welcome to the show. Hello. Nice to be here. Uh, we had the chance. So funny, Jen and I have, have known uh, kind of virtually each other for a long time and we finally <laughs> got a chance to uh, rub shoulders. I think it was, was it Lori Nordstrom's deal yeah, at WPPI? Yeah. At Lori's class at uh, WPPI. So we were all fans on the side and, and colleagues and um, it was great to support and be around and and then I think Jen ran and I both ran off and gave our own platform talks and well, I don't think Lori came to ours. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She came, I think she came to mine. Oh, yeah. great. That's perfect. So she didn't get to mine. So <laughs> you're telling me. That's great. Uh-oh. We're trying yeah. to it, Lori. It, it's, right. it's no problem. <laughs> but uh, Jen is famous for a lot of things. One is she has a very successful photo business, and she also has some really cool sites. Uh, the, the one that is most known is uh, jensfabulousstuff.com, and we'll talk yeah. more about that stuff later. But for now, Jen, especially for folks... Um, it would be shocking actually, but I think it's funny how circles of photographers and creatives, they can become a little bit uh, myopic and we don't always know each other. But for those few people who are on the show and don't know who you are, give us a little background on <laughs> how you got to where you are today. Okay. Well, um, this next summer will be my 15th year as a photographer. Wow. I actually had a background in, uh, my degree was in fine art and graphic design. So I was actually a designer before I was a photographer. But I um, kind of fell into photography by accident. I knew I wanted to do something creative. And when I was in school and um, on the track to become a graphic designer, I went to go work for part-time for a photography studio and started out as a camera room assistant, hmm. um, fluffing hair and making people laugh and whatever. So um, I fell in love with photographing people. And I is, is then went on hair, an intro. Is fluffing hair really a, a, an actual skill set? Like, can, yeah, could you fluff my is, hair? Could you fluff? Is. A little uh, no, there's no hope for Just you. Just put the hat no, back on. No. All right, that's it's wrong on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> so when I uh, I did my internship in graphic design and found out that I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. All right. So I went back into photography, and so I worked for three different studios, and then decided I should stop saying what I wanted to be when I grew up and actually be it. So I um, started my business. Um, this summer will be eight years hmm. with my business partner, Kate. Um, Kate is the left brain of the organization and I am the right brain of the organization. I always say that I'm going to make a business card sometimes that just says I make things pretty because that's really all I do. Um, she and I make a lot of decisions together but I do all of the photography, all of the design and she. I'm lucky that she kind of does all of the business end of the business. So we mm -hmm. each kind of respect each other and we don't really get in each other's game at all and it really, really works out well. It's nice to have kind of the yin to my yang and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it works out really great. Can I, so I don't have to worry about all that stuff that we hate as artistic people. I just get to be creative, so it's fun. I think that's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, Twitter you on that whole yin to my yang thing. But. <laughs> yin to my yang. <laughs> And then we started um, Jen's Fabulous Stuff about, gosh, it's been about three and a half years ago. And it's kind of funny how it's evolved. We, we started it because Kate and I, you know, I was doing all of this speaking and I was taking all of the products that we as speakers sell when we go because everybody has said, oh, I want to do what you do and, and how are you doing your marketing pieces. And so we would take all of this stuff to sell. And so I finally, you know, Kate and I were talking and we said, you know what, we need to make it just a little website where I don't have to bring products with me mm -hmm. and people can just go and download everything that they would want. And as it turns out, it has grown into this massive entity where anything that you could even dream of using in your photography business is on that site. Mm -hmm. And I've... Um, 
also a lot of our contributors. We have contributors like Lori Nordstrom and a whole lot of other really great creative people now also sell all of their products on our site. So it's a really great like one-stop shop of anything you'd ever need. So it kind of like blossomed this crazy thing that we weren't expecting um, with the help of our other partner, Jack. He's just taken that and just made it crazy. So it's been really a fun ride. But yeah, that's kind of where I come from and where I'm at. So, well, okay, so, and, and the empire that is uh, you, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's no joke. I mean, how many staff do you have? Um, we have three different businesses, and the other one that we just acquired is a framing business called MariposaFraming.com, um, which has some really great products. So all in all, with all of the partners and all the employees, we have about 12 people currently. Wow. So three businesses, oh, twelve yeah. people. Um, it's a great team. They all work really great together, and everybody's kind of like a family. It's fun. And you're you're active. You're actively shooting. You're actively educating. Uh, and yeah. I, I know a lot of folks know you as in the boudoir category, but a lot of folks also know you in the senior category. And it just it strikes me as as uh, a really diverse brand. Uh, it kind of is. Uh, we live in Minneapolis. So Minnesota is extremely seasonal. You right. know, we hibernate for <laughs> six months out of the year. Right. We're the land of extremes. It's really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. But we fit in, I shoot about 300 to 350 clients every year, about 10 to 15 weddings. Hmm. Um, and we do all of that between June through December. So I do all of the speaking and teaching on the, those off months, those off seasons. So we kind of have to take everything that comes at us because we have such a short season. Yeah. I don't really turn down anything. I say if it has two eyes and moves, I photograph it. <laughs> so I don't turn down anything that walks in the door. Yeah, exactly. Or, or you know, one eye and a half. I'll do that. <laughs> so it's good. No, we kind of do a little bit of everything. And I'm like every other photographer. I'm so ADD that if I had to do just one thing all the time, I'd probably have to hurt somebody. Well, it, so it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like having the fun. I, 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 it's interesting that you bring in the geography in it because you know there's, there's so many conversations around different markets. So I live, you know, I'm in Orange County, which is near the LA market, which is one of the bigger markets right. in the U.S. And it's really tempting, I think, um, to be critical of, you know, we have sun all, all year round, and to say, you know, you really need to be niche and uh, really focused, and I actually, generally speaking, believe that. But I also believe that you need to be diversify your revenue portfolio as a service professional, so that as things change and things are you know adjust, you're on the ready. Uh, and it sounds well, like. Well, I think it's interesting go ahead. because I'm sorry, I'm totally interrupting you. No, but that's right. as digital has exploded, um, our market has changed. Yeah. And I think it's always evolving and it's always changing you know our biggest market share used to be children and family and with all of the I, and I hate to use the term but with all the moms with cameras and um, all of the new people who are now photographers that part of our market is dwindling a bit I won't mm -hmm. say that it's gone because it's still a big part of what we do um, but it's shifted so now high school seniors are the are a big part and over the last two years boudoir has become a big part mm -hmm. so it really, it's kind of nice to be able to do all of those things and be well-rounded and have something that you offer to everybody because yeah. things come into trends and they leave. And, you know, you never know how long boudoir is going to be a trend and, you know, that's coming back. But now the high school seniors are starting to take each other's senior pictures. So it's kind of nice to be that all-around photographer. You can still have a niche, but I, I think it's nice to be able to do all the genres. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, one of the things that you mentioned that, that I really want to key in on today that I think uh, could be helpful, it's actually come up in past shows when, like, for example, um, and I'll get to the point in a second, I, I had my friend Jeremy <laughs> Coward on the show a few times, and Jeremy yeah. Coward, like you, his background's in graphic design and fine art. And I adore him and follow him on Twitter, and we've never met. We should be friends. Oh, so well, if you could introduce you. Jeremy's yeah. a dear friend, and he, and he really is, he's the real deal. He's, my gosh, it, I, was, I was just this morning hanging out with another kind of um, high-end model fashion photographer person. We were talking about Jeremy, we're mutual friends, and both of us were just kind of like, like, really? Does he have to be that good? I mean, he could be good, but can he be right? that good? It's just sickening. But, I know. but one of the things that he talks a lot about, um, 
is is his interest in not being kind of singly category categorized as, right. as just a photographer and uh the way that he uses multimedia and the way that he and clearly what oh, I i've think seen it it's incredible it is incredible and but what i'm amazed by is how much his graphic design is design general his design sensibilities inform his composition when he's shooting and Absolutely. how that really gives him a critical edge and i would argue the same is so for you uh, talk a little bit about how how like are you more designer than photographer or, or more photographer than designer or does one inform the other talk a little bit about that you know again it's one of those things that i like to do a little bit of everything and and maybe that's just the add talking i don't know <laughs> but i'm i'm a little bit of both you know the reason i decided not to do graphic design and go into photography is i loved the human interaction yeah but i love the design elements and the compositional elements of being a designer and i think as a photography business owner i think the two marry very well um I didn't want to sit in front of a computer for the rest of my life and take an art director's um, kind of direction, if you will, and, and make a commercial product for the rest of my life. I yeah. wanted to work with people. And so I, I love combining the two in our business. And, and I love designing all of the products and, and the cards and the albums and everything that goes with it. And it feeds my designer soul, but I still get to have the photography end and really get to tell people's stories and get to know who they are, um, whether it's an individual or a couple or a wedding or whatever the case may be. I love the human interaction that comes with photography and the composition and, and everything that comes with design. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of both. Well, it's it's fascinating because you know I know for the folks who are listening at home, there is a, there's a breadth of people as we've gotten to know our audience. Uh, they're, they're certainly a contingent of folks who are looking to get inspired and they're, you're, maybe they're just getting started or uh, they are in that category of, of uh, inspired by somebody else. Uh, they, they, they might not be following the traditional path of, of a photographer. I know I certainly didn't when I got into the game. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're just excited to learn. There's other folks that, that have followed different paths of creativity. Maybe they're, you know, we have painters, we have writers, we have a whole bunch of folks who tune mm -hmm. in, but now they're photographers. Um, and right. and it's informing a bunch of things. Another another photographer um, that comes to mind is my friend Mira Ko, who her background was actually in mm -hmm. writing before she got into shooting, and it, that narrative really informs how she does what she does. And now she's moved even beyond shooting to uh, she's doing some stuff on television, and she's talking about photography yeah. and empowering women, and all of that's in this kind of grand arc of a narrative. And I'm so struck by that that integration. So for the folks yeah. that are listening at home regardless of what their background is, how important is it for them to account for their kind of life's resume uh, in leveraging those things for their work photographically? Does that question make sense? Well, kind of, yeah. I think that so many of us, um, I would hope, are right brain individuals. So if you are, most of the time, if you are a photographer, you're also going to be somebody who likes other right-brained activities. So you're going to love writing. You're going to love music. You're going to love those sorts of things. And what I think is so cool is that as photographers and as right-brained people, all of those activities can be used in your business and can be used in your work and can be used because they are emotional things and they really amplify the work and they let you connect with other people. I think that I mean, I minored in English, and I love to write, mm. and I love, I, I sing, and I'll, don't make me sing. Go, go, but, come on. <laughs> no, we're not happening. Break it but on, Dan, come on. all those right-brained activities um, really help us creatively and really help us to connect with people because they are such, you know, human interaction activities. They're mm. all about telling a story. Music is telling a story. Writing is telling a story. Photography is telling a story. Uh, painting, whatever the case may be. And so many of us are so concentrated on that part of our brain. And I think that's a, that's a positive. As long as you can also be a business person, or if you're not a business person like me, I would say the thing that makes me an awesome businesswoman is knowing I'm not an awesome businesswoman. Wow. And I have Kate who does that side of it of it for me you know we have that that partnership in our business and able to have both sides of our brains work really well but I do think having all of those right-brained things helps me to connect with people 
on all of those different levels. Well, okay, okay, so is that what you asked? Well, <laughs> c- close, because uh, because okay. uh, but I want to come back around to it because I want to come from a different angle. But one of the things okay. I'm hearing you say is that you know the 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 idea that most photographers are right brained and by right brain kind of the stereotypical creative side versus the analytical right. side on the on the left brain. Um, right. That um, I I wonder if that's true. Like couldn't couldn't mm. a left brain person get into the photo industry uh, or into the creative fields and go, but you know what, I, I, I'm really more entrepreneur and I get creative in the entrepreneurial side and I have, and I, and I outsource the create, like I hire the hired guns to, to take the shots. Um, I, I definitely think that there are two types, there's probably many types of photographers, but definitely the two. Sure. You know, I've known brilliant business people who have five or six different photographers who all have their strengths and they, you know, they work together as, mm-hmm. as this big team and, and the main person runs the business. I think that you can definitely be that person. And I think that I've also encountered a lot of photographers who are um, very technical and very analytical um, and they are amazing commercial shooters. I have a tendency to think that people who shoot commercial work and, and those types of people are more left brain. And then there's the people like I love natural light. I not like I know the camera like the back of my hand, but I am not the most technical person. I'm like I'm like the piano player that doesn't read music. Mm-hmm. I mean I I I you put it in my hand and I know what to do with it and I know all the reasons why, but so much of that becomes second nature and I'm more about the connection and I'm more about the what happens naturally and, and organically. Mm. And I think that there are definitely those two fields. There mm. are the photographers who are very analytical and left brain and then there's those that are very creative. Mm. I think you can do both. Mm. So so to come back to the, the other question I had, so if I'm at home listening to this and I'm I'm getting inspired <laughs> and I'm going, Okay, I'm not sure if I'm left or right, but I got some crazy past. It sounds like whatever <laughs> right. like a big chunk of what I'm hearing you say is know yourself. And based on right. knowing who you are, you can bring in other players, you can participate, you can collaborate, uh, and that you're going to get the best return. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Hmm. Absolutely. You know, I know that my strengths are making people comfortable. I know that my strengths are spontaneous creativity um, and design and being in that complete mindset with my own personal work and with hmm. my clients' work. Hmm. and. I know that my weaknesses are, I can't even figure out my tip at dinner. I do not do math. Um, so nobody should ever put me in QuickBooks, okay? Uh-huh. I should not deal with, um, you know, booking the appointments and answering the phone. I have, um, you know, people that, that do that because if I book a client, we will not have an email address. We will not have a phone number. I'll be very excited that I booked a client, but I'll be like, oh, we're never going to be able to get a hold of them because I will miss those details. Hmm. I am about the connection. I'm bad at the details. So, yeah, absolutely knowing yourself and uh, and playing off your strengths and weaknesses, hmm. you know, outsourcing things that take up too much time hmm. and things that you're not good at and letting somebody else do that so that you can use your talents to do the things that you're best at because if you concentrate on the things that you're best at that's where you're gonna make your money that's where you're gonna live the way you want to um, and and be the happiest if you're concentrating on on what you do best mm-hmm. that's really helpful okay so let, let's turn a corner for a second and and talk about um, deliverables one of the things that I've been really high on lately is this distinction I have in my head between building a platform and building a product or a series of products. So for example, a lot of folks know who Jen Hilling is. That's in my mind more a platform. If I go write a book, I'm not making money off my book. Those aren't my products. That's building a platform. And people can know who I am right. in that regard. Or in my photo business, you know, in my in my region and my market, how I'm getting known is building the platform. But ultimately, the platform is supposed to be setting the table in my mind to sell certain products. And you Absolutely. are someone who has multiple you have, you have multiple platforms really. Like again, you're known if I if if I know if I know you uh, as a as a senior photographer, I probably know you pretty exclusively in that regard. Or if I'm a photographer and I'm right. buying uh, Jen's fabulous stuff, I probably know you in that category primarily. Right. Um, how do you um, hold intention both building your platform and coming up with products that are actually going to pay the bills? Um. So you're asking. 
with my photography clients or with photographers? All of them. Or both. Well, that's what's okay. so remarkable about your business is you have, right. again, you have so many businesses to so many different targets. It, it <laughs> makes it makes sense to me that you have you have a dozen staff because it would take that yeah. to do all those things yeah, well. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, it's really, gosh, that's a hard question. Um, hey, we, we don't we don't go lightweight on, on fast track coaching. We <laughs> that's how we roll, okay, apparently. <laughs> that's the hard stuff. Um, you know, when we started Jim's Fabulous Stuff, it was because I was out there educating photographers on how I ran my photography business. And the whole concept behind it was I want to make this as easy as possible for other photographers. Mm. I want to provide you with things to help you grow your business. So you're right. There was a platform of me educating and say, this is how we're doing it. Mm. And then the products to say, okay, if this is what you want to do, let me make it easy for you. Got it. And I think that that was the spirit behind it. And I think, you know, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide education and we're trying to provide things that make it easy for photographers to make money in their business. Got it. Um, in terms of my <coughs> photography business and, um, and, and that, it, it's kind of the same spirit. It was, um, I'm creating images for my clients and I'm trying to create products that make it easy for them to display and love their images. Hmm. So it's kind of the same spirit behind it. I want to do what I do, either educate or photograph and, and connect with people and then have those products behind it and make it easy for photographers or make it easy for my clients to really do things with the images and those moments of life that, that you're capturing. So when you say make it easy, I mean, I love that phrase because what, what you know, a, a similar metaphor that I think a lot about is removing pain. So if I'm talking with a client who I'm going to do their, your family photographs and uh, mm -hmm. every fall, one of the first, and I get it, you have a conversation with them. One of the first questions I ask is, "Have you ever had a professional photograph taken of you guys? What was a positive part of that? What was a negative part of that?" And I'm discovering they have a lot to say about their negatives. Uh, it, it, they, there's really? a lot of pain in the process of getting a family portrait done. You know what to wear, really? okay. when, timing, the schedules. anxiety of are my kids going to behave? Exactly. And, yeah, do I have okay. to? Do I, can I get a pass from being a parent that day? Uh, can I, am I allowed to bribe? You know, all those kinds of dynamics. Um, it's interesting. It, I've never thought about it that way, but we do everything to eliminate the pain of that. I've even had clients who are returning clients yeah. who are neighbors of my business partner and things like that. And we've told her, you know, don't even come. We're going to pick up your kids and we're going <laughs> we're to take the photo and we're going to bring them back to you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, people that we know really well. And, and there are times where I've had to ask a mother, um, you know what? It's like leaving your kids with a babysitter. I'm going to leave you in the front entry and I'm going to take your kids because when you're not here, they're going to be awesome. When you're here, they're going to pick up on your anxiety. So yeah, I've totally, I've never really thought about all the ways that you alleviate the pain for your clients, but that's true. And that's true with the products too. Well, that well, that's like, what's, well. It, and when you say make it easy, in my mind, like that's that's what you're yeah. doing is is yeah, consistently totally. looking for those spots and. So again, for the viewers that are at home and they're thinking, okay, I have my business, whatever niche they're in, um, what are some things that you've learned for clients in particular, especially given the breadth of different genres you shoot in? Mm -hmm. What are some kind of fun, easy pain points that might not be as obvious? Like the, like the you know, what to wear? That's an obvious one. But uh, what are some ones where you've been surprised by, gosh, when I saw this pain point for a client in this genre, it really opened things up. Any ideas? Wow. You do ask the hard questions. Hey, man. man this, think about this I'm stuff. not messing around. No. This isn't... Honestly, I know. you know what's wow. so funny, Jen? What's so fun about this show? This is my little secret. You can't tell yeah. anybody. It's basically I'm in okay. perennial research on best practices with the world's greatest photographers. <laughs> and I there basically have conversations with all my friends and steal all their ideas. It's awesome. So go ahead and tell me. Okay. I'm already... Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, you're teaching me things too because I hadn't thought about the eliminating pain concept, but that's totally true. Well, isn't it, well, isn't it great things. that we get to have these conversations where we can both find totally. better and better ways and then also have a trickle out? Uh, I, I love it. I love totally. America. I love that we can do this. This is so great. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Um, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> How do I eliminate pain? What are some what specific are pain that points I... that you've noticed? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think, you know, it 
we're talking about design and, and things like that. Um, you know, I always do in person. Well, I don't do it, um, but I should never go in my sales room. But we at the studio do in person sales. You know, the the client comes in and we we do it very emotionally. We sit them down in a beautiful room, mm -hmm. and we do projection sales. So we are projecting the images large on the wall, and we're helping them to narrow down. I think one of the biggest things is, and this sounds I don't know, kind of counterintuitive, but one of the painful things that they have is I don't want to get rid of anything, but I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So we try to alleviate that. We walk them through the process. We use ProSelect to, you know, narrow down and go, okay. And we always say it's kind of like the eye doctor. Do you like this one or do you like this one? Yeah. You know, and we narrow those things down and they'll get down to about, you know, 20, 30 images that they can't live without. And it's painful. It's like they're they're as emotionally attached to the images as I am. I always call it like killing my babies. Like I can't right. let them go. Like right. no, they belong to me. But you know, the client gets really attached to them too, and they say, you know, I can't get rid of anything. Well, in design, we're taking away that pain because we're providing ways for you to use every single image. That's right. So whether it's an album, whether it's a framed collage, whether it's a greeting card of some sort. We are trying to make sure that we are going to use every image that they love in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's how we kind of eliminate it with our sales and our, our design process. You know, um, what I love about that too, Jen, is, is what you're describing. It's not just like clever ways to manipulate people to buy stuff. It actually is creating huge value to embed nostalgia into these products, absolutely. into these images, and to build a narrative around each image and to, you know, cre so well, if people I, are feeling that, so it's much. real. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, part of the reason why I love the design products so much is I think when you do one wall portrait, I think you lose the story of the session that you've created. Mm -hmm. We always say, like, I always say, I don't want to sell a wall portrait. I want to sell a portrait wall. Mm -hmm. So I want to sell seven wall portraits in a grouping that has, you know, each little child, uh, um, how, somehow captured and then the family groups so when I'm photographing a family I'm photographing mom and dad together because they haven't been photographed since they got married yep. and I'm photographing yep. each kid individually and then I'm photographing mom with the girls and dad with the boys and just the boys together and just the girls together and just the kids together and I'm doing all of those little groups because I want this session to be about how this family is connected and yet how each person is an individual. Mm. And then with the products that we have and the things that we're trying to sell, I want to tell that story of the individuality and the connectedness of this entire family. So I want to do multiple prints on the wall. I want to do an album. And maybe it has words in the album that talks about what a family is. Or it's a Christmas card that talks about you know, what their family means and what they're trying to wish to all their friends and family. And whatever a case may is, I think that the designed products that we create help to tell the story of what that session was and who that family is. Well, it's, it, now it makes more and more <laughs> sense. It makes more sense to me now that you have so many creative products that you sell because, again, your design aesthetic and your design bias already is kind of built in. And then on top of that, you have. Uh, you, so you've built a bunch of great products that can be embedded with your photographs. And then mm -hmm. you are enrolling your clients through projection sales to fall in love with these images at a deeper level. And then you're making it really simple for them to go, wait, I get to carry this feeling with me when I'm gone in multiple right. formats, uh, you know, multiple souvenirs totally. with the brand on it. And the brand is mm -hmm. them. Um, mm -hmm. that, pretty cool. It's like going to a Laker game, and, or maybe not a Laker game, a Timberwolves game. Uh, the former Lakers. Uh, and, oh, uh, yeah, don't even talk about some sports right now. Okay. It's bad. <laughs> uh, but but it, it's funny. I, like I've, Before this moment, I've never really thought of the idea of like treating my client like they're a brand and my job is to give them apparel, like not just clothing or like whatever, but to give them right. vehicles to reinforce their family brand uh, right. within their family. Um, it's powerful. I think that the, the story of each client is really what you're trying to create. Hmm. I mean – or what you're trying to capture, I guess. And I think it's funny, I always say that being a photographer is half artist and half psychologist. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you really have just a couple of minutes from when that client walks in your door to figure out who are they, mm. how do they want to be perceived, and who do I need to be For them. to make them comfortable yeah. and, and to achieve that. You know, and everybody's different, and every, especially it's amplified with children, too. Every child is different. 
uh, some of them need you to be very quiet, and some of them need you to meet their, meet their energy level. High school seniors are the same way, you know. I've had to have the conversation with high school senior boys of, all right, listen, I know you don't want to be here, but if you don't cooperate, your mom's going to make you come back. <laughs> so, like, all of these things, you have to be able to um, relate to people, yeah. and I think you have to be relatable and and really draw people out, because it's a vulnerable state that they're in when they walk into your studio. You know, they're anxious, they're vulnerable, they've, they've never done this before, they're freaking out, and you have to figure out who they are as individuals and as a group if you're working with families or, or couples or whatever. And so I really think it's half photographer, uh, half artist, half psychologist. Mm. I think that developing that side of yourself and learning to read people's body language and learning to relate on that even subconscious level mm. is it can be a huge benefit to what we do. Mm. Well, Jen, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. I mean, really, this is helpful for folks on so many levels to think through what they could be to their clients and how they can present themselves and how they can be resourceful with their their background, how they could partner more thoughtfully, bringing the right pieces together, and ultimately, you know, delivering products to clients that, that really, um, again, remove pain, make it easy for them to have a meaningful experience out of the whole experience. And and you provided a lot of these for people. And I want to make sure people know how to get these resources. So if they want to get access to some of the things you've designed for other photographers, the easiest way to do mm -hmm. that is to go to jensfabulousstuff.com. Jensfabulousstuff.com. Like yeah. a gazillion word yeah. or letter URL. I know. It's the longest URL in history, I'm telling you. And, and then the new one that you have is this framing shop, this Mariposa framing. Yeah. Is it yeah. Now, you told me before, it's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A framing.com. Is that right? Yeah. Correct. Cool. Yeah. And, and they have really great new products. Um, you know, one of the things that I like is uh, we have frames that you can put your albums in. They have amazing prices and great framing. And it's just one more thing, you know, to add to your client sales. Awesome. And it's worked well for us. Awesome. Well, and, and if people yeah. want to uh, say thank you to you online, they're going to meet you at on the Twitter at, at Jen Hellinger, right? Yeah, correct. And, and, um, meet me on the Twitter. Yeah. On the Twitter, make sure to say hello. And you by the way, if you are at home, please, please, please say thanks to at Adorama. Better yet, go buy something from them as a thanks for uh, them providing Fast Track Coaching for free all these weeks. If you want to catch any of the fast, past shows, go to blog.fasttrackphotographer.com and uh, and be sure to tune in next week. But again, thank you so much, Jen, for being here and uh, look forward to seeing You're you again so soon. You're so welcome. It's awesome. Thank you. Bye, friend. Bye-bye.